This video is specifically for chronic overpackers who just want to make their lives easier while traveling, ditch the check luggage and go carry on only. In this video I'm going to cover my tips and advice for packing for a one month holiday in Europe in just a carry on but it will apply for other destinations or types of trips too. This is all according to a former overpacker who has seriously changed her ways and learned a lot in the process and if you need proof here is a video of my poor husband carrying a full size suitcase over farmland for like a five day trip and I think I only ended up using about 30% of the items I brought so we have come a long way. If you are new around here my name is Jess and I am a Kiwi living in London sharing all things living abroad, the travel I do and of course all the food that I eat along the way so if you are into that sort of stuff I would love to have you stick around here otherwise let's indulge my inner type A and talk all things packing. Here's the thing, good packing all starts with good planning and figuring out where to even start comes down to three simple things. The weather, the culture and the environment and finally your activities. Number one, the weather obviously this will factor into the type of clothing you want to bring, whether you need to bring warm or waterproof layers or any other sort of specialty gear. When it comes to Europe in the summer the clothing list is pretty straightforward but when it comes to winter or shoulder seasons you will definitely want to pack wet weather gear and also some thin layers made of smart fabric like Uniqlo's heat tech range. Next up we've got culture and environment. Depending on where you're going you may need to follow a local dress code to be more respectful. For example having a shawl over your shoulders when you are visiting religious sites or it might just be more practical clothing requirements such as having really good walking shoes on Europe's notoriously cobblestone streets. And lastly activities, pretty much you just want to pack for what you're doing. So if you have an outdoor adventure holiday, make sure you're bringing practical items for that. If you're going on a beach or resort holiday, bring lots of swim gear. And if you're going on a city break, make sure you bring comfortable shoes and some like nicer clothing options that you can mix or match. Just pack for what you're doing, it's as simple as that. Now we're going to talk about the controversial part, luggage. There is no cute way to sit in this framing so please bear with me while I try to get all the bags in the shot. Now luggage is always a personal preference but my choice for travelling carry on only for a longer period of time is number one, a hard suitcase that fits the carry on requirements for the airlines, number two, a backpack of choice as my personal item, and number three, a much smaller discreet sort of crossbody pouch. The reason I go for a suitcase over a more traditional backpacking style bag is quite simple, I'm just not that strong. And I really hate having to lift a really heavy backpacking style bag onto my back when you're sort of jumping around on and off trains around airports, it just doesn't work for me. In situations where I can't roll my suitcase, so for example on cobblestone streets, I will just pick it up and carry it. And I've honestly found that those situations happen a lot less than sort of wanting to roll your suitcase around airports and train stations and so on. I will be upgrading my suitcase soon to one of the brands listed on the screen. It's Amazon One, it's okay for now, it does the trick, but it's definitely not great quality and I don't think it's gonna last that much longer. As far as backpacks go, I have tried both the Nordisk and the Tropic Feel one extensively and the Tropic Feel one does get the edge slightly because it unzips completely like all around like a suitcase so it's a bit easier to pack and it also comes with a compressible packing cube that attaches to the front so it's really easy to expand the bag's capacity. Both of them, they're equally high quality though and if you like a lot of smaller compartments, the Nordisk one might be for you. It has a lot of different clever spaces to store your things in. This is honestly the least flattering angle ever but we are at the last bag which is the Uniqlo crossbody bag. I have this in multiple colours now, it is definitely a go-to, really good for your essentials like your passport and your phone and I do find that when you are travelling Europe and you are paying to have an upgraded airfare so that you can have this bag in the cabin with you, I usually don't blink an eye at an extra small little bag so that's a good tip otherwise I can always fit this in one of these bags when we are going on the plane if I have to. Okay now let's talk clothing principles. I'm not going to run you through a full list because it will be different for everybody but these are five principles that I follow to get the most out of what I'm packing in such a small space. Principle number one is to choose a colour story. A very simple way to make sure all of your pieces go together and make good outfits is to have a colour story or just sort of a theme to your travel capsule wardrobe. It could be neutrals and warm tones for a Scandinavian winter or pops of blue for an Italian summer. Whatever your choice, the theme is going to make it easier to get dressed and kind of give a nice tone to your trip. Principle number two is to pack for 10 days. So if you are going away for more than a month, my approach is to pack outfits, underwear, all those pieces for 10 days. I usually do washing every single week, but that way if you go a little bit longer or you have trouble doing washing in one destination, 
you've got a, a little bit of a buffer there. Number three, very simple, pack and layer. So these are things like big scarves or sarongs or button up shirts or shirt dresses. Anything that you can easily layer up or down it makes getting dressed a little bit more interesting and is really useful in those shoulder seasons when you do have to layer up. Number four, choose smart fabrics. Now this applies for all seasons and some of you will want something that's light and breathable. So things like cotton or linen and that also dries quickly. And in winter you will want to look at smart tech fabrics. So things like merino or or Uniqlo's heat tech range are really great for adding warmth without adding bulk and denim. Denim is not very compressible so have a serious think about how many denim pieces you are bringing with. And the last one, wear your bulk. That giant cardigan, those hiking boots, that puffer jacket, if you bring it, you wear it. On the plane, on travel days, removing these items from your suitcase is going to give you so much more space. Clever packing tips. Now there are a lot of those smart packing videos floating around the internet these are the hacks that I've tried and that have kind of just stuck it out in my routine for me. Packing cubes. Now these are not new or revolutionary, but I will explain the way that I use them when traveling for longer periods of time. I will use compression packing cubes as part of my backpack kit. Now with my Tropic Field kit, this is built in as part of expanding the bag's functionality and capacity. So I just clip it onto the front or if I'm using my Nordis backpack, I will just pop it inside the main compartment. And I will use one or two soft packing cubes as part of my main carry-on suitcase. I will use these for things like socks or underwear, just loose bits that are easier to kind of keep together or sometimes as a cover for my shoes. But I don't use a ton of these in my suitcase and that is because of my next tip which is the Marie Kondo folding technique. I prefer this folding method for a few reasons. Number one, it makes getting dressed when you are traveling for long periods of time a lot easier. You can just see everything at a glance and not forget about what you have packed. And the second reason is I actually think it takes up less bulk than rolling. I feel like if you are above a size six, which I am, or you're taking more than just crop tops, Rolling can actually add a lot of bulk and so I personally prefer using this folding technique. And lastly, these tiny little Muji containers to decant all of your beauty products into are actually a lifesaver. Like we all know about buying travel size products, but with these ones you can take those kind of pesky or annoying items like a face serum or a curl cream or a face mist and put it into this tiny container. I can easily get about three to four weeks worth of product for these types of items into these containers and they save me so much space. Okay, now we're on to smart travel essentials and there are a lot of these Amazon travel must-haves floating around the internet. Some of them good, some of them okay, and some of them like a complete waste of your money. These are smart travel essentials that I have tried and tested that make it into my bag time and time again, always for a long trip. Number one, laundry essentials, which are actually really important when you are traveling for more than a few weeks. I always have a Tide pen just in case for stains and also laundry sheets. Both of these are great space savers and help you get more longevity out of your clothes. A microfiber towel. Now these are surprisingly useful, not just if you are staying in hostels or going to the beach, but say if you want to go for a picnic and you just want something to sit on, I have used mine much more than I expected to. A compact travel umbrella. Now I live in London, so I am not going anywhere without one of these, but I've also been in Italy in the middle of summer, a 20 minute walk from my accommodation with no taxis available and in the middle of a downpour. So it's one of those things that when you need it, you're going to be really happy that you have it on you. Purpose-built organizers. Now, some of these can be a little bit of a waste of money, but two that I use time and time again are one, a jewelry organizer, and two, a tech organizer. I love a jewelry one because I just hate my necklaces getting tangled, and you, you can also purchase really compact versions of these. And a tech organizer is just good because I'm not going for the vibe where I'm trying to fish out an SD card or like my phone charger from the bottom of my backpack. It just keeps everything all in one place. And lastly, a sturdy collapsible tote bag. In the event that you do buy more than you expected, it's really nice to have one of these on hand so that you can bring some stuff home. But also they're quite useful to use when you're going out for the day or the evening and you don't want to bring a big backpack with you. And if it helps, I've linked all of these travel essentials in my Amazon storefront so you can find them all in one easy place if there's anything you're missing. Okay, so now you are a master packer. Let's cover the last part, which is what not to pack. Because we've all been there, me included, at the 11th hour, just chucking something into your bag just in case. And that's not really an option with carry-on only because all of your space is already accounted for. Number one, bulky or heavy shoes. Leave behind those chunky sneakers or heavy boots that are going to add unnecessary weight to your luggage and opt for lighter, more streamlined versions that are designed for travel or if you are going to a winter destination, just make sure you wear your bulky shoes on travel days. Number two, hair tools that take up a lot of space. So straighteners or hair dryers or curlers, 
Just leave them behind. Most hotels have got hair dryers on hand. And also it's a nice excuse to kind of wear your hair more naturally. Take it as an opportunity to do that and just go with the flow. That's often what I will do on these types of trips. And number three, packing just in case items. Avoid packing based on like the worst case scenario and just trust that you should be able to buy most essentials at your destination if you need them. So toiletries, first aid supplies, basic clothing, don't chuck it in on the off chance that you might need to use it. Just buy it there if the occasion comes up where you do. Oh my gosh, guys, we made it. Those are all of my tips for packing light. If it seems a little bit daunting, my best suggestion is to start small. Take a weekend trip, take only a backpack, and I think you'll be surprised at A, how little stuff you need, and B, how much freer you feel when you are traveling light. If you guys have any packing hacks or recommendations, leave them in the comments. I love to hear them. And if you want more travel inspiration, check out my South of France playlist here and I will Go see you in the next one. Take Bye! A little ride if you want to. That's cool. I